Uh, I'm, born a here? I'm a Kenyan. I'm originally from Diani. Oh, you're and, born here? Yeah, born in Mombasa. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. I had you speak really very good, <laughs> and I'm like, oh. When you come to Sands at Nomad, every single thing you eat there comes from this farm. So, we are going to the farm to show you everything that you eat at Sands at Nomad. Join us, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and also turn the post notification so that you get notified whenever we post more adventure from the coastal part of Kenya, the capital of Africa. Hi, my name is Ati. I am the sustainability manager for the Sands Group in Diani. Um, and what I do is I find ways to reduce the impact of the properties on the environment, both socially and environmentally, and try to find ways to save money. Um, all of those three parts together is called sustainability. So I'm a sustainability manager. So we bring the waste from the organizations that comes here, we make it into compost. Some of it we make it into chicken food. Some of the solid waste we repurpose into planters for our growing our vegetables. And so yeah, we try to find ways to reduce, reuse, recycle and repurpose all of the waste coming out of Nomad to reduce our impacts. I don't know if you'll see it now, but the pickup comes in here and every single day it drops off all of the fruit and vegetable waste from the hotel and restaurants uh -huh. and all of the leftover food from the plates in case uh -huh. you've got some leftovers. We don't, we don't waste it. The oh. fruit and vegetable waste comes here. We build compost piles, mambolea, lots of mambolea. Oh, this from is the our, food? Yeah, waste, food, oh. food waste. Okay. Yeah, so you can see here, we even have like bits of coconut here. Yeah. There's uh -huh. even some mango shells. Uh -huh. You'll see there's even bits of waste because even uh -huh. waste can creep into it. Yeah? Okay. So don't go on top, the topsoil. I've actually built compost piles underneath about for the first one foot. And then on top of that, the topsoil, which we've now mixed with some of our compost, it means that over the next five to 10 years, all of the vegetables and plants we grow in our greenhouse are going to have their own natural compost pile underneath them. So it means we won't have to work so hard to compost it. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not a very nice day to visit here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so farmer, this is a good day. I love farming. I love farming too. It's my favorite. Actually, farm. I have a farm myself. It's good for the soul. Yes. Know? Seeing those crops yeah. come out is really amazing. So you can see some of our cuckoos are in here. Um, yeah. On a good day, we're getting about six trays a day. Six um, trays of eggs. When it's raining like this today, we'll probably get about three. Oh. Um, but you can see we're also using some vertical planting here. So uh -huh. any of the fences that we have, rather than leaving it Bure without anything, we've made the fence productive by putting passion fruit on passion it. Fruit. Or beans. Uh -huh. Or even a tree like this one, it's a Moringa. Uh -huh. it, it might be non-productive, but what yeah. you do is you plant a passion fruit at the bottom uh -huh. and suddenly a non-productive tree becomes productive. Um, Moringa so, seeds are very medicinal. Yeah, yeah this is yes. a superfood. Yes. So if you open up these pods, you end up with these seeds. Yeah. These are the guys that if you crush them and make the powder, um, yeah, very good with spirulina. I actually kind of chew them. You chew them as well? That way. Imagine that I don't eat eggs anywhere else. I'll only eat eggs at Nomad because I know where the eggs come from. Exactly. There's so many farmers, they'll put um, antibiotics to their chickens because the chickens are sick. Uh -huh. And you're not supposed to be harvesting eggs after that. But yeah. people will still sell the eggs. Yeah. So this is a pond here. One of the most important aspects of organic farming, for anyone who wants to run an organic farm, one of the first things you do is you put in a pond. And the reason is, is this is going to be breeding your air force and your army, your pest control air force and your pest control army. Oh. So your frogs and your toads, those guys are your army, they're on the ground. So every evening they have lots of little babies in there and they come out and they go into the shamba and they eat the crickets and the grasshoppers and some of the snails. And that's like, okay, cleaning out then, you have your dragonflies. The dragonflies, you know the guys with the four wings? Yeah, I know Those guys them. are your air force. They have the highest success rate out of any predator in the entire world. If it decides it's going to cool that doodle, it's going to cool that doodle. Ah. So those guys now go above your shamba and they clean out your flying pests. So the more water sources you have, the more of an army you have to fight against your pests. Yeah? I didn't know that. Now you do. <laughs> wow. I love how you discovered everything. Yeah. This is a broken fridge. Broken fridge. That's one of the one of the first washing machines that uh -huh. served the Nomad Hotel like maybe 50 years ago. Oh. This was one of the first ones. Uh -huh. Yeah, and now we use it for growing things. Awesome. Yeah. You're giving me lots of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the other important aspects of an organic farm, I told you how we're making making our own bolea already. Mm -hmm. So now this is a worm farm. Yeah. 
So this is my wormery, which to a lot of people they'll be like, oh my god, it's so chaffle. But this is not actually, this is life. This is really, really good. Mm -hmm. So if I dig around in here, I didn't bet, you'll see oh, my worms. Yeah, the and worms. And doodles. Look at these guys, little red wrigglers. Yeah. Okay, so now worm castings, which mm -hmm. is actually the, the urine and the, the toilet of the worm, mm -hmm. is recognized as one of the best natural fertilizers in the entire world. This stuff, if you're going to an agrovet and you're buying NPK for you know, 500 bob for a kilo or whatever it is, here I can make it for free using waste from the hotel. So the hotel waste comes in here, we throw in maybe once a week, the worms eat it, they break down into the fertilizer castings, which then drains with the rain and comes into that bucket at the bottom. Oh wow. We then take that bucket and then we put it onto the nursery and it encourages stronger and better growth with more health and I didn't need to spend money to buy fertilizer. Wow. I used waste to make it. Yeah? These are techniques which have been lost to farming for so many generations, and we actually need to try and relearn these techniques because we're becoming less dependent. We need to be more independent farmers. Yeah. Okay. You guys. I love that shit. Yeah, gooseberries. They're not, suppo know. they're not supposed to grow here in Diani. Oh. Yeah, but we've managed to get so many growing. Ah. Yeah, I'll wash they, them for you. you can have oh, them okay, thank you. <laughs> they grow in my village yeah. and in the wild. <laughs> so this is a bit of a mess at the moment. Uh -huh. um, we're in the process of coming to sort it out. But you can see a lot of the items from the hotel, they come here first. Oh, the and then items. I look at them and then I work out how I can use them, what I can use them for. Uh -huh. um, and then what I can't use, I then find people who can use. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you see around here we've got a lot of fruit trees. We have a lot of papayas. This is a um, an orange tree, especially a mandarin or the guava. There's mango trees. These are all custard apples and tomoko. We have cashew nut, have avocados, um, yeah, plus some moringas. So we try to have as much variety on our farm as possible mm -hmm. because variety in any habitat is stability um, yeah. and abundance. Mm -hmm. We've actually we just started recently on trying to add some new pro programs and projects. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, do you guys know what microgreens are? Micro no. Microgreens. So basically, the, the, you grow the, the seeds of vegetables um, into a small shoot, and when it's very, very small, you then harvest it and then it goes into salads and that kind of stuff. You've definitely seen them in your food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now we've started to try and do microgreens here as well. Oh, so many. Yeah. So we have kangas also for the eggs. Uh -huh. um, this is actually a West African variety of Elmetic guinea. Mm. Not <laughs> They're not, no. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's about it from the Chamba side. Um, obviously now, as I said, it's not the best time to be here. Um, no, but okay. it's nice that you guys came. Right? We like awareness um, and also trying to share what we do. So other people can also think on this kind of idea. Pests, so, and lizards, and spiders. These are all things that people are like, oh my god! But those are your pest control army. The more hedgehogs, the more lizards, the more spiders, the more frogs, the less pests. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was in a forest up there, walking through this forest in the middle of nowhere, and there next to the path was a grizzly. Oh. I was like, wow, oh, this is a wild, wild, wild one. So yeah, guys, that's about it for now. I don't know, maybe were beaten but we've been producing a lot of stuff out of these recently um, you can see this waste pipe here yeah. so this is from nomad one of the waste pipes that was broken and was removed rather than throw away the plastic waste we then convert it and turn it into a grow tower now the concept of that is called vertical stacking and now this is what is going to save the human race mm -hmm. in terms of food you've got this much space on the ground now you can either plant one salad Mm -hmm. or you put in a vertical tower 
and on that same space you get 20. 20. Yeah. So now that concept is now being used all over entire greenhouse warehouses now. Especially so, people living in urban areas yeah. with little space. Yeah. It's from today. Yeah, that's all today. Yesterday we had another 60 pieces. So, so nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to try and take it all out so you can see a bit more of the freshness here. Yeah? Oh so goodness. we have salad, lemon juice, it makes it more purple. If you add just water or the, or the tonic, it just makes it blue. So we're starting to try and use they these also, now. No, it's not the one they have in salad. There's, uh, the there's one, a different one. Yeah. That one's called Lebelia, ah. uh, which I, I'm going to harvest this morning as well. Okay. And here's some rucola flowers, which we like to throw in on top of the salads. Check one. Oh. They actually they have a slightly more rucola taste as well. Mm -hmm. That was a very, very good and very, very insightful messages from Ati. Whenever you're coming to Sons at Normald in Indiani, coastal side of Kenya, of course, if you have watched this video, by now, you know where what you eat come from. Wow. That is so nice. I really love that. So, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not subscribed, kindly subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Ciao. Thank you so much. Eh? Well, wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, welcome back to Sands at Normal.